Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is congratulate you for getting to this end of the course. And uh, what I'm going to do is just kind of do a summary of how to identify the slope, um, how to write an equation, I'm sorry, in slope-intercept form, and then identify the slope and the y-intercept. Now, there's a lot of different ways that we win about this in this course. So I'm going to kind of do a brief overview of everything, or at least kind of separate them in two different ways. So the first, thing, the first types of problems that we kind of investigated were problems that had um, an equation either in slope intercept form or I mean in standard form or were kind of not um, not in standard form or slope intercept form they might have been just like you know y minus 6 equals 5x or something so the main important thing for that was to always isolate it get the y isolate the y get the y by itself by using our inverse operations so therefore it's always y equals and then once we know it's y equals then we had y equals mx plus b so to identify the slope and the y-intercept the coefficient of our linear term x would be m. Whatever that value is, that's going to be our slope. And the y-intercept is our value of b. So that would be your y-intercept, which remember we can always write as a point at 0, comma b. Um, the next types of problems were, what about if we were given one point in the slope? Uh, we're given the slope and the slope and the y-intercept. Um, or if we were just given two points. Well, if we're already given the slope and the y-intercept, then we just plug those two points in for m and for b. But if we're given one point in the slope or given two points, then we kind of have a couple options to do. When we are given just two points, the first thing we do is to find the slope. Then we know the slope, and then we know two points. And it doesn't matter if you know a point, uh, the slope and two points, or the, po or the slope and one point. Basically, what you do is you plug those points back into the equation, either slope-intercept form or point-slope form, as well as plug in one of the points into there. And if you plug those, the point and the slope into slope-intercept form, then you solve for b. Once you solve for b, you now know the slope, and you already know the y-intercept. If you plug them into point-slope form, then what we simply do is just simplify the problem and rewrite it into slope-intercept form. So now what I'd like to do is just kind of go over some tips and tricks that uh, might be able to help you as you start kind of uh, moving on from this course. First of all, whenever we're you know, trying to write in slope-intercept form, I always think the easiest thing to do is identify the slope. Sometimes the slope will be given to you, sometimes it will not. So sometimes you might have to find it, for instance, like if you're given two points. So identify what the slope is first. Um, or um, find, determine what the slope is going to be first. The next thing is if you're given an equation that um, you know, is just like in slope in standard form, then identify the slope by solving for y. And sometimes what I like to do is circle the y. And the reason why I like circling the y is because that kind of tells me that I am not going to do any operations to my variable y. I'm simply going to undo everything that's happening to the y so that it can be isolated. And kind of the last step, this kind of goes through this, the methods of when you're giving points, you know, do you plug them into slope-intercept form or do you plug them into point-slope form? And it doesn't really matter which one you do. Through this whole course, I've gone over both of those. But I think I think you want to find a method that you understand that works for you and stick with that method. Even though I teach both of them, um, figure out which one you understand the best and continue using that method because you can use that method um, on and on and on forever as long as you want. You don't have to keep on going back and forth. Some common mistakes is uh, point for the y-intercept. Oh, a lot of times when students, they know what the y-intercept is, and it might be given a point like 0, 8. Well, if, it's, if you're given the point, you know, 0, 8, then the y-intercept is going to be y equals 8. So therefore, really, b is going to equal 8. That means you're going to plug 8 in for your value of b. y equals 8 would be, um, actually, no, I don't want to write y equals 8. Because I don't want to confuse you anymore, but if 0, 8, that means b is equal to the value of 8 because x is always going to be 0. The next thing is not isolating y. I get a lot of students, you know, I'll give them an equation in standard form. I say, what's the slope and what's the y-intercept? And they'll just automatically always pick the number that's in front of the x and say, that's the slope. And they'll just pick whatever number's by itself and say, you know, that's the y-intercept. And you got to make sure when you're identifying the slope and the y-intercept that you isolate y. It always has to be y equals. Then you can take the number in front, your coefficient of x, and the constant. And the last thing comes in from plugging points. Remember, when you're plugging in points, um, especially in the point slope form, you have x, y, 1, and you have x, 2, y, 2. Remember, when you plug, you've got to make sure you plug them into the same 
ones for x1, y1, x2, y2. I get a lot of students that put like the x and y's for both x's or the y's for both x's. You know, so you just gotta be very careful when you're plugging in those points that um, you don't kind of mix them up. But there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is just kind of a brief little summary, some tips and tricks and common mistakes. I hope you helped you out, and I look forward to seeing you on another course. Thanks.